Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's English Weekly Message number 98. Yes, this is number 98. And before we begin, let us pray. Father God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for another day you blessed us with. Father, we thank you for your unfailing love, for the outpouring of your grace and mercy, for your holiness and faithfulness. Father, we also thank you for sending your one and only Son, our Lord Jesus, to save us from sin. We thank you too, Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to live in us, to help us, to guide us, comfort us, as well as convict us of our sins. O oh, Holy Spirit of the Lord, our God, we need you each and every day. Help us. Help us to live a holy life. Help us to abide in the Lord and abide in his word. Thank you too, Father, for sending your mighty angels to surround and protect us. Continue to command your mighty angels to surround and protect all of us, all our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world. Father, thank you for using me as your messenger. Open the eyes and ears and heart and mind of all the people watching this. All honor and glory belong to you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Believe it or not, the, mes the, the, the title for today's message is we don't command angels. Yet there seems to be a misunderstanding within the Christian groups as to whether or not we Christians can command God's angels. There are Christians out there, believe it or not, who believe they have the authority to command angels. In fact, some of them even believe that as long as they use Jesus' name, they can command angels. Well, one, there are no biblical scriptures to support this belief that people can command God's angels. Notice I said God's angels. They are His angels, not ours. Think about it. What does the Bible tell us about God's angels? They are beings of a higher rank. They're above humans. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 9, out of the New Living Translation, it says, And furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world we're talking about. For in one place the scriptures say, what are mere mortals that you should think about them or a son of man that you should care for him. Yet for a little while you made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. What do we see is Jesus who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. Now the scripture that the Hebrew writer was referring to was Psalm 8, verse 4 and 5. And I just need to reiterate this, that anyone who teaches believers that they have control over angels is false. Like I said, there are no scriptures supporting that. But believe it or not, I met pastors who commands angels or believe they can command angels, even though I've told them numerous times that they cannot command angels. Right? In fact, I even asked him, can you show me scriptures to prove your belief? They could not show me any scriptures. However, I did provide him with scriptures, with examples where believers prayed to God and God answered them by sending his angels. Here are some examples in Acts chapter 12, okay, verses 5 to 11. It says, But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, Quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. 
But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard post and came to an iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. Peter finally came to his senses. It's really true. That's what he said. It's really true. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. So notice the key takeaway here. The church prayed earnestly for Peter. And God heard their prayers and he sent his angel to save Peter. Okay. In the Old Testament, same thing. During the time of Moses... When they, cried out, when they cried out to God, God sent His angels in Numbers 20, 16. But when we cried out to the Lord, He heard us and sent an angel who brought us out of Egypt. Now we are camped at Kadesh, a town on the border of your land. You need to understand, angels are God's servants, not man's. Only God can command His holy angels. Okay? Who does the bidding of the Father in heaven, not you. If you believe that you can command angels, then you better confess and repent from having to believe that false teaching. What did the Holy Spirit remind you? And what do you need to be doing now? See, you can always ask God to send His mighty angels and let it be done according to God's will. That's how you should be doing it. And that's the message for today. God bless you. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for clarifying with us when it comes to your angels. Father, we ask now on behalf of all our, other, all our other brothers and sisters in Christ who believed in the false teaching that they can command angels, that you forgive us. I pray for the spirit of repentance to come upon them, Father God. Again, thank you for clarifying this with us. May we do what is right. May we do everything according to your will. We love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. And our prayers are with you guys. Bye-bye.